All right, everybody, thank you so much for your patience. We got the live stream going again. Uh, I think everything is set to go. Uh, Karen and I are kind of lonely here in the boardroom, completely by ourselves right now. Uh, but we have everybody else appears to be online. We've got uh, somebody on a Chromebook. Not sure who that is. If you'd like to identify yourself, that would be great. That's Janice. Oh, okay. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> uh, then we have Wegman, Wolnick, Caius, Allen, Sanchez, Julia Lemp, Van Kirkhoff, Tansley, Molina, uh, Steve Arnold, Sterrett, and Kenyon, all online. So, Mr. Kenyon, if you'd like to begin your meeting. Oh, wait one second. It's starting the uh, audio recording. Uh, just click the uh, dial on the right. Just push it. Good. All right. Sorry about that. We are now good to go. So uh, please go ahead and begin. And Mr. Hansen has now joined us here in the boardroom. Mr. Kenyon, I think you're muted. I'm unmuted now. Thanks. You, we are hearing you my, now, so go ahead. Don't let my wife find out about this, or I'll be muted forever. Let's okay. call a roll, please. Can I call a roll? Kai is present. Kobe? Kai is present. Molina? Molina present. Sanchez? Here. Starrett? Starrett present. Regnan? Here. Kenyon? Here. Okay, we'll have a motion for the approval of the minute. From October Starrett moves. Starrett moves, who second? Caius. Caius second. Is there discussion on this or uh, any additions, Mr. Caius? <laughs> no, I think we're good this time. Okay. We're ready for, to vote, please. Caius? Caius, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Starrett? Starrett, yes. Wegman? Wegman, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Uh, they stand approved. Is there anybody signed up for public comment? Thing. Seeing none, we'll move to our partners, Mr. Arnold. Thank you, Mr. Kenyon. Um, a pretty brief report today since we're all virtual. Um, normally, I would distribute a Kane County farmer to you. I, I uh, declined uh, Mr. Tansley's offer to share any materials. Uh, as I told him, I just got a new computer in my office yesterday, and I'm, I'm not sure how well uh, I can function with that uh, system yet, but so a brief report from uh, some of the things that we reported in our November farmer, uh, the King County Farm Bureau participated in a $10,000 grant, uh, an FFA teacher retention grants, what I'm going to call it, uh, to Caitlin Post, who is a second year teacher at Burlington High School uh, in the FFA program. And that's basically an incentive for her to continue uh, five more years in that current line of employment uh, as an FFA instructor and agriculture teacher at Burlington High School. Um, our Kane County Farm Bureau Not-for-Profit Foundation uh, made actually its largest single grant ever uh, last week. It gave a $20,000 grant to the Hinkley Big Rock FFA alumni to build a new ag education building at the high school campus in, Hig in Hinkley. Um, we will be announcing in our December King County Farmer uh, several programs on COVID relief 
that are applicable to farmers. Uh, the first is in regards to basically business interruption, and that will uh, that will come from the local funding that the county of Kane received. So we want to notify farmers about their eligibility for round two COVID relief from the county of Kane. Um, about coronavirus food assistance program round two, which is a federal program, and I believe those applications are due by December 11th. And then third is the uh, uh, the farmer mini grant program that Mr. Tansley is going to talk about a little bit later uh, on your agenda today. Um, we will also be um, announcing that, um, and I believe I announced this to the committee last week, but we haven't announced it publicly uh, through our publications that uh, the King County Farm Bureau received one of 12 County Activities of Excellence Awards from the American Farm Bureau Federation. Um, I especially wanna thank Jody Walnick. I don't know if Jody's on the call, but uh, a lot of this is due to Jody's work with uh, the revisions to the stormwater ordinance to put some farm agriculture and open space friendly um, best management practices into the ordinance in lieu of stormwater detention in, in those situations. And that's what motivated us to uh, plant a pollinator rain garden on our property as a demonstration project to show farmers how they could uh, install those best management practices in, in lieu of detention. Um, upcoming, we've got uh, policy setting meetings for our statewide organization. These will be virtual meetings uh, for the statewide organization on December 5th and for the national organization on January 10th through the 13th. And uh, the last thing I have to uh, tell you this morning, again, goes back to local. Uh, the Farm Bureau has been retailing Christmas trees on our lot on Randall Road in St. Charles for about 15 years. And uh, those Christmas trees will arrive Monday. So. If anybody wants their Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving, we'll have them available Monday. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Arnold, is is the cutoff uh, approached us for the ordering fresh turkeys? Um, that, that deadline is tomorrow, um, as is the deadline to order uh, um, truckload citrus from uh, Florida, Texas, and California. Um, grapefruits, clementines, and oranges. Uh, we do do a truckload citrus sale every year. And if you're interested in any of that product or fresh local turkeys, uh, you can call our office 630-584-8660. Thanks, Mr. Kenyon, for the commercial break. Well, it is pretty locally grown. That's right. Uh, Waterman, Illinois. And there was a nice story about them in our, our state magazine. So... Uh, it's it's pretty neat to be able to buy something local like that. Yeah. Is there any other questions for Mr. Arnold? Okay. Can we go to the Northern Illinois Food Bank, Julia? Yes. Thank you so much. Hope everyone is staying well. It's nice to see everyone virtually. Um, so just some updates on some things that I shared last time. Um, we are well underway in our holiday meal box packing and distribution. So we've started distributing those boxes. We're on track to distribute over 49,000 of those boxes. Um, and just for reference in past years, that number has looked more like 30,000. So the need is still very high and we are anticipating it to remain very high in the coming months. Um, looking forward, one of the challenges that we're still anticipating to face is this commodity clip coming from the USDA. So as I shared last time a little bit, um, a couple of USDA programs that provide food to food banks are going to cease to exist at the end of this year. Um, and that includes the coronavirus food assistance program and some of the trade mitigation food that we've been receiving. And so we're looking to see over 50% of our food that we're getting from the USDA um, to stop coming to us. So we're anticipating quite a cliff there. So um, our network and the Feeding America network is working hard to try to figure out how we can work with USDA to make sure that we're still receiving food so that we can meet the highly increased need in our communities. 
Um, so those are two of the big things that I know I shared last time that I wanted to give updates on. And then Matt, I don't know if you were able to open that link to that video um, that I shared with you earlier. Uh, I should have it. Um, we were not able to test it ahead of time, so we can give it a shot. Is that what you want shown right now? Yeah, would that be okay? Um, last time I was here, I shared that we were shooting um, a bit at the food bank for localish, and um, we have a draft of that video. It hasn't been publicized yet, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek if we can get the link to work. Uh, All right, we'll give it a whirl here. Just okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Farmers love growing food for the world. It's a source of pride for people um, to be the small group of people that um, plays a part in putting food on the country's table. And in this case, in, into the food bank as well. Something I take the most pride in is being able to come from the farm and be able to grow up here because it's so different than the way the rest of the world grows up. I love working at a farm, it's been like a a very awesome experience. It's almost like a form of therapy nowadays. We have small farmers out there and regular farmers who are growing it because they love it. Because they want to serve men. They want to make sure that, that we have the food that we need in order to sustain ourselves and be healthy. The journey of food always starts with someone, a grocery store, a manufacturer, a farmer, choosing to donate food to a food bank. The food bank acquires that food, it's brought into a warehouse where we're gonna sort and repack that food, and then we're gonna distribute that food out through a food bank program or through one of our food pantries. It's at that point that it's given to a family who's in need and they're able to take it home and have it for supper that night or put it in their fridge to eat later in the week. Because of COVID, our numbers are up, but we still make sure that they get the healthy food that we can get out to them. When you come to a pantry and they can offer that healthy food, it means a lot to us. If you don't have that fresh food, you can't afford to buy it, and that is that pertains a health risk. Fresh produce is particularly important to the neighbor in need because it's very expensive to purchase. Many of our families are trying to stretch their dollars at the grocery store. So buying a pound of strawberries versus buying a lower cost, less nutritious item, that's a tough decision to make. So having access to fresh produce, thanks to the Disney company, helps our neighbors lead happier, healthier lives. Disney is committed to partnering with parents to help them create healthier and happier kids. And so we do that through supporting Feeding America's efforts to end hunger in the U.S. by funding programs who provide fresh produce from farms directly to communities by removing some of the barriers of transportation and refrigeration. It is a critical component of our healthy living commitment. Every day we see folks showing up at their very best. They're coming here to help us. They want to provide encouragement and love and food to neighbors in need. We also see folks coming to us and saying they need a little help. And I believe that's when we're our most courageous, is when we're able to step forward and say, I need a little help today. So what I think is so cool is I get to see people at their very finest, at their happiest and their most courageous. And what a blessing in anyone's work. My husband was in a car accident five and a half years ago. Um, we were that family that was just that one paycheck away from being homeless, being in the food pantry line. And the pantry saved, saved us in so many ways and it has touched so many people. Um, I can go out there on a Sunday and our pantry clients know. I know their stories, I know who they are. Um, if they're new, they're welcome. And that's one thing that we've been told. You touch us just by that one, just by saying hi. It's because we treat you like your family. And that's what we are, family. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, like I said, that's just a sneak peek. It's supposed to be published end of this week or in the coming weeks. Um, so yeah, that's what we've been up to at the food bank. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of Julia? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Deborah Allen. I'm not a member of the committee, but I would show that that uh, film anywhere, it's a, it really touches a heart. 
Thank you. And I'll make sure to get a link sent out to everyone once it's publicized and we have a link online to it. So I'll be sure to share that around when it's completely done. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the work you do. No one, no one should be hungry. And you have a, you do a vital service over there at the food bank. Thank you. If, if there are any, no more questions, we'll move on to presentations and announcements. Our mini grant program, Matt Tansley. Good morning. Thank you, Mike. I'm just going to bring up some slides here that I have. So just give me a second. Okay, so today I wanted to share a couple of updates on the farmer uh, operator survey and mini grant program. Um, I covered a lot of um, some different elements of that during the last meeting, um, but we're getting closer to the point where we can launch the survey. So I wanted to give a bit of a preview of what uh, what we'll be releasing and the timeline for uh, administering this this program. So right now we are in the process of making final edits to uh, the survey and the grant application. And so we're hoping we're going to be releasing that within uh, the next week or so. We'll probably take a little bit more time just to to review that internally and go over the, the final draft with our partners. Um, but we're really, really close to being able to publish that and begin the program. So this is just a sampling of, of what the survey and the application is gonna look like. Uh, we're currently testing out an online form that we'll be able to use to administer this. Uh, we really think this is gonna dramatically streamline the process for collecting responses as well as uh, reviewing the applications as they come in. So basically, everything that comes in is going to be able to be exported to a spreadsheet. So it's just gonna make it a lot easier to not only review the applications, but also to do uh, some more thorough analysis of the survey data um, as it comes in. And so we're gonna be able to use that and be able to make um, certainly reports to the committee, and that's gonna be a great resource uh, for pursuing other funding opportunities, as well as just having a great picture of what uh, conditions look like um, across the food farming landscape in Kane County. So, and this is just, uh, just another sample page. Um, so it's pretty much gonna be organized where the first section is going to be the farmer survey, the operator survey, and then the second section of the application is going to be uh, the questionnaire for the mini grant program. Uh, so it's all going to be within one form that users are going to be able to navigate through and and input their their information. So as far as the timeline for this, uh, we're just going to take a little bit more time, as I said, to to finalize the application design and go over this with our partners. Um, we're hoping to release this uh, probably sometime next week is when we'll launch it and publish it. And so once that is out there, uh, it should be available for farmers to, to review and to submit applications for about three to four weeks. And then hopefully by the end of December, uh, we're going to be reviewing and notifying those farmers if, if they were awarded grants. So we'll hopefully be sending out those notifications uh, by the end of December and the end of this year. And so once those notifications have been made and the awards have been distributed, uh, farmers are going to have about three months uh, to utilize those grants. So that's going to be uh, the time frame uh, for putting those into practice. And then at the end of March, beginning in April, uh, we're going to be requesting that the recipients provide a summary report, basically just a short narrative explanation 
of how they were able to use their grants um, and how that how that helped them, you know, make it adaptations to uh, the pandemic and just and be able to function um, as effective businesses. And and then we'll be using that reporting information that they submitted to prepare and submit our final report to Compere Financial, which is uh, the granting foundation that made the original grant uh, to Kane County. So we're going to have to fulfill our obligation to them. Um, but we're really excited to get this program off the ground. Uh, we really think this is going to be a starting point for other opportunities um, and providing other resources to farmers. Uh, so we, we really see this as being um, a very useful source of information going forward. Thanks. Thank you very much. Is there any questions for Matt? Hearing none, um, um, we'll move on to Janice Hill, the executive planner. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Um, no slides for my item. Uh, just a request for concurrence um, on a project that Jody presented at a previous meeting. Um, we'll be asking for um, a, funds uh, from Farmland Protection Fund to be able to hire a contractor to do non-point non data collection for Kane County in our agricultural areas. And uh, Jody's going to describe the project a little bit more. I know she talked about it at a previous meeting, but uh, we'd like to be able to proceed with that as we move forward in 2021. Good morning, everyone. Um, Blair, would it be possible to uh, forward the PDF to page five, which is the map? Thank you. Um, so we have before you this morning uh, a map, uh, and the map really details out some of the previous work that has been done um, by Fox River Study Group and Friends of the Fox. Uh, we have a lot of um, dots you'll see on there, specifically the green dots with the, the darker color in the center. Um, they've done a lot of work uh, determining the water quality on the main stem of the Fox River, as well as uh, the Tyler Creek area and the Fearson Otter Creek area. Um, these watersheds and where the water is coming from that are draining into these creeks are um, very highly urbanized areas. And so we've talked previously in the past about um, the Kane County uh, work along with the Illinois Nutrient Strategy document. And that really outlines some goals for the county in regards to nutrient loading, which would be your nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, the issue we kind of saw in, in the forefront is the fact that um, under that guidance document, there's something called nine-point source pol uh, pollution from these, from these uh, nutrients. And when you're looking at point source per pollution, you're looking like at our, wa our wastewater treatment plants where there's a, a pipe that ends and then comes into the stream system. The nine-point source uh, additives to that are much more difficult to define because you don't often have a point that's coming into a creek that you're able to sample. And so we're looking in these parameters at almost 50% of them coming from these non-point source pollution. These can be from lawn fertilizer. They can be from failed septic areas that are draining right into our creeks. Um, they can be from agricultural fields. Um, but we don't have a good gauge on how much and how what the percentage is from each of these areas. So knowing that we have a lot of data from our urbanized areas and the, and the way that Kane County has developed um, moving from east to west, um, we have a great opportunity at points along our smaller stream systems to start establishing some baselines for these non-point source pollution. So we'd be able to, in the future, say that 25% of our nitrogen loading is coming from egg fields, for example, and 20, the other 25% is coming from our urbanized areas. This will help us to better define what kind of practices going into the future that we would like to implement and where. One of the other challenges is that our agricultural areas, the soils are different and the topography is different. 
And so we've specifically looked at areas within the western portion of Kane County that have these different parameters. The area in Big Rock, for example, has very heavy soils. We call them hydric soils that like to hold water, and it's very heavily tile drained. And so that's a good area to look at these parameters because we do have pockets of these same similar areas around our county, and then we can utilize the data from that area to, de- to define other areas that might have similar loadings. In the same manner, the area around Hampshire is slightly more hilly and has lighter soils. And so we don't see as much tile drainage. We see more water running directly off the field into the streams. And so, again, we've located some data points up in that area to try to find what the difference is between those type of agricultural areas and the ones with more heavily tile drained areas. The map we have in front of you actually has nine sampling points. Um, Rob Linke and myself have visited all these points, um, and they are adequate for sampling. Um, We have great sampling points that we'll be able to easily get samples from um, on a yearly basis. Um, We did find the one Mill Creek sampling tile location um, was actually underwater due to a beaver dam. And so we've relocated one of the tile locations to further to the west in Virgil Township. So the map will change slightly, but not too much. So in general, we have six sampling points that are directly in the stream and three sampling points that are tile samples. And those will be sampled starting January 1st of 2021. And then the sampling will run through the end of December 2021. And we've put forth a 14-event sampling. Our our staff in Environmental Water Resources will be doing the sampling, um, but we added the two additional sampling days because it is important to get a sample results when there's either a flood or a drought. And so if we have the opportunity to do sampling during the time that we're having flooding um, or really low flows, those are great data points to get as well. So we're following along the same um, sampling parameters that were done by the Friends of the Fox and the Fox River Study Group, so we can utilize their data to start um, parsing out what is urban and what is rural. Um, And these would be done by First Environmental Lab, Um, so we would be collecting the sampling samples and then bringing those to the lab for analysis. In total, the sampling cost uh, for the analysis is $14,817.60. And then our average staff rate of $68 an hour with 210 hours of staff time, that's an equivalent staff value of $14,280. So um, that's all I have to present. If anyone has any questions, that would be great. Any questions? Jody, did you oh. say you, or Mr. Chairman, Kaya? Go ahead. Yeah, did you say you were going to start sampling in January? Was that what I? That is correct. Yes, um, and we believe that, it, and we'll find out. Obviously, we believe that all of our sampling locations have sufficient flow that we should be able to sample through the winter. Um, but there are um, potential uh, tile drainage that might might not be sampleable that early in the year. Um, so we'll have to play it by ear in regards to that, but it would be really good to get samples uh, starting out in January. Jody, when will you uh, will you release uh, the collection data throughout the year? Or are you going to do it every three months or six months or wait all year? Yeah, we'll wait all year um, to compile the data, and then we'll be also looking at the data from the urban areas, um, and we understand that Aurora's done some great sampling down there of their uh, urban outfalls as well. Um, So we might be working with Illinois State Water Survey on analyzing some of that data um, before we actually release any of it. Um, And we're also going to be uh, doing a field survey as um, we are doing the the sampling collection. There's a number of great points where you have a 365 or 360 degree view of the fields uh, right adjacent to that sampling point. And so we want to make sure we're documenting when we are taking the samples, what time, what type of croppage is in the vicinity of the sample that we're taking. So we have a good idea of when crops were brought in in 2021, 
um, when crops began to grow in 2021? Um, are there cover crops that are, are visible right from our sampling point? And then we're going to use that data along with um, what NRCS is collecting um, for the uh, tillage conservation tillage and their data analysis of the area to kind of better um, understand what type of farming is going on while we're doing the sampling as well. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions? We'll, we'll look forward to January and the start of this program. Um, there's several other things under there, Janice, that you want to you talk about? Uh, no, just if we could get a, maybe a voice vote of concurrence for this, that would be a nice support for the project. I uh, will do it by a roll call. Do we need a, I suppose we need a motion. Would somebody like to move? Sanchez moves. Caius. Sanchez moves. Caius seconds. Do we have a concurrence for this uh contractual project for collecting data for agricultural sources. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Caius? Caius concurs. Molina? Sanchez? Sanchez also concurs. Starrett? Starrett concurs. Wigman? Concurs. Kenyon? Yes, concurs also. Thank you. And uh, Debbie Allen, we look for your support too. I concur, um, sir. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much, everyone. Anything else from you, Janice? No, I don't have anything else. Just thank you for the support as always. Thank you for being here and doing the work you do. Um, thank you to the committee for being part of this all. This as you know, we're the only county in the state that has an agricultural committee. And uh, if you're looking back like at other meetings, Kane County is always leading the way. So uh, we, you, we can be proud to be part of this county and all the work you try to do. Mr. Chairman, and, it's, ju it's just their loss. Um, this is, the agricultural committee is an integral part of our government. I'm thank you for chairing it. It's it's in, we learn something every month, don't we, Chris and, and Jared? <laughs> yes, we do. You got if, it. If we continue can you next year we maybe get some more reports on on uh, hemp growing because FS has got a the cancer of FS is that you got a hemp person working up here and she actually grows it on a farm down in Woodford County. So, and then of course we we like to talk about our uh, uh, our oil. Um, 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 we can't call it marijuana oil, CBD oil. I mean, you, uh, being a user of that, I I appreciate what it does for your pains and aches. Does anybody else like to say anything? There's no new business. I'd like a motion to put the reports on file. Wegman motions. Starrett. Starrett moves. Seconds. Wegman, Starrett, is a discussion on this? Hearing none, let's call the roll. Caius? Caius, yes. Uh, Sanchez? Yes. Starrett? Starrett, yes. Wegman? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Molina, yes as yes. well. Oh, Mol Thank you, Molina. We found you. We lost you a little bit, Marna. Uh, if there's nothing else, uh, would Penny Wagman like to move we adjourn? Yes, for the ti final time, I move that we adjourn. And I will second that. End of an era. Oh, yeah. This is an era. <laughs> If she moves up the ladder in her public service. Well, maybe you can come back and join us uh, when you're down the stairs. You can come upstairs. I will uh, do that. All in favor of German, say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. We're adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Chairman. It's, 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 we, I, I kind of like it because all of us learn something every month. But enjoy your t family get togethers and your turkey. And of course, you can eat in separate rooms of your houses. What? Right. There's, there's no quiz this month? Well, I didn't prepare one enough. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Unbelievable. We're all ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go. No, I don't even have a prize. Mr. Arnold, would you have a prize? A can of nuts? Having trouble finding my audio. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you draw, you draw a winner and send them in here, and they'll get the prize of the day. I don't know what it will be at this point. Maybe it'll be a pillow pet. I, okay, it'll um, be a pillow pet. <laughs> Mr. Kaya, I want one of them smoked a... turkeys. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Did you see what they cost? Delivered by yeah, I did. Evening. <laughs> Good quality. Good quality. And time. And we had a fresh. We deadline. had a fresh one once. Mr. Caius, do you have a uh, suggested question? Well, uh, well, when's the deadline to uh, uh, to uh, reserve a turkey? Tomorrow. Oh, Penny wins. Who went, who went to Penny wins. Wins. Way to go, Penny! <laughs> All right. Know where I'm going for Thanksgiving? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> for nuts. All right, you'll get the prize then. <laughs> snack food's awesome. Okay, I love snack food. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, it... and I'll see you guys this afternoon. Yes. Right. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Carol. Bye. Thank you, Chairman. Bye.